Hi there. Welcome to day eight of my series of blog posts and videos uh, that I'm making in support of a Kickstarter project titled 575 Science Fictional Examinations of the Elusive Haiku, uh, which is a book that is um, out, like I said, on Kickstarter right now. You can back it if you want. Its entire conceit is that I have written 100 haiku with science fictional elements, uh, because that's who I am and what I do. <laughs> and I have rolled those uh, 100 into AI art generators just to see what will come out, right? And, and very uh, fascinating and interesting little project of mine. And along the way, as I was working on the project, I looked at it and said, you know, this is something that I need to actually delve into more deeply because it's both fascinating and curious and the world outside is exploding. And fundamentally, um, I realized even as I was starting this little side project that I was going to be making a commentary blog post video uh, on this particular subject, which is why artificial intelligence to begin with. I mean, not only just in relation to the world that I live in, the artistic, creative um, um, world of people who are like me, but better. <laughs> uh, whatever better means in the world of art, right? And, and the question that I keep hearing people talk about is actually kind of a science fictional question, right? It's the dystopian idea of why would you even open, um, you know, haven't you watched Jurassic Park? Haven't you watched? <laughs> and, um, and I think that's a valid, interesting question. But in the process of doing this, I've been ultimately uh, infinitely sensitive to other uses of AI, and I find them all over the place, right? Uh, it's not just something that has come to the forefront in our creative world. It's um, everywhere, right? Uh, the most interesting one that I had seen, I put in my blog post, and that has to do, well, not the most interesting, perhaps most relevant to everybody's life is at some time or another, you or a family member will go into the emergency room. And so, when I saw uh, information about the way AI was helping um, emergency room doctors uh, triage and figure out who to send home and who to keep here and uh, you know all sorts of stuff. And then it expanded out into other medical worlds, right? Um, those things have direct bearing in our lives and they make our lives better. And I think that's the fundamental answer to the question of why artificial intelligence to begin with, uh, which is very, very different in the world we are living in today, that, that uh, artificial intelligence is very different from the Skynet world of Terminator um, um, or the DNA thing <laughs> of Jurassic Park and you know all sorts of, of things. Us science fiction writers can create a really good dystopia if we want to, uh, to do so. This is not it. Um, the AI in the world today is built fundamentally to help us humans in worlds where data is huge and answers are <laughs> thin, <laughs> uh, are precise, right? Uh, and AI can find patterns in data that a human being cannot find um, or can only sense or you know whatever and then the ai has to figure out what the probabilities of doing things are and and so forth just like a human being would so there are problems with using that approach uh, but at the end of the day there are problems with using human beings in in the loop in the question for every one of these uses some that i noted inside the blog post uh, if you want to find hundreds of more just Google artificial intelligence in the real world or whatever you want to Google and you'll start to find uh, just a gajillion places that artificial intelligence is making headway into helping us do the things that we want to do. 
and at the end of the day, I'm going to probably, I don't know exactly where I'll end this, um, this series up with, but I may be stealing a little thunder uh, because I've been thinking about this. You know, at the end of the day, we do not have an AI problem. We have a human being problem, and it manifests itself inside the arts um, in just the same way that we have human being problems inside the arts now, right? People can steal our stuff now and do steal our stuff now. Um, there's nothing new under the sun in that aspect. Um, I can even make an argument that the use of artificial intelligence might make it easier for us to find things. Uh, it may be a thin argument, but it's it, you don't know what the future is going to hold in that sense. And I think the fundamental thing that I'm thinking about in relation to that question of why artificial intelligence even to begin with, can't we just leave the world alone, <laughs> is uh, its purpose and its primary use in almost every field in some way or another is to make some improvement someplace. And where we have problems is not with the use of AI, it's with the people who are using the AI and laws help, but do not change that, right? That's my final, uh, uh, final thought in this particular one is we do not have an AI problem, we have a people problem. And perhaps the next few blog posts of these will get into some deeper aspects of that. I, I don't know where I'm going to go at this stage. I've got three or four things in mind. So, Anyway, that's a happy thought. Like I said, uh, <laughs> um, this, um, this series is both optimistic and pessimistic. And I don't know which one this <laughs> video blog post is, it seems like just uh, pragmatic before it's all said and done. Uh, let me know what you think and uh, tell me how wrong I am, because, you know, me. Um, and beyond that, have a fantastic day and I will see you tomorrow.